your brain actually gets small dopamine rewards for every time you check your notifications on your social media and so this is why it becomes addictive and so I think the first thing is cutting out those temptations and it, like when I get to the work, when I get to the lab in the morning I turn my phone off put it on my desk so that's one temptation out of the way I try and get an estimate for how long I can usually concentrate so it's usually let's say like half an hour and then I will sit down and try and do a task and if I find that I look at my watch and it's been more than half an hour so I've done better than my usual I will reward myself for that so then it's definitely a reason to you know grab a cup of coffee or even just take a walk around or you know that little increased high and that bit of reward reinforces that um, behavior. The brain is quite valuable and can make mistakes a lot of the time so I try and outwit that by writing stuff down all the time and uh, never assuming that I'll remember things. <laughs> Covering my desk in post-it notes to remind myself, you know, if my memory ever fails then I've, I've got a record. <laughs> We're very good at making associations between specific things, um, particularly specific places um, and objects or specific places and, thing, and sensory information. So it actually helps with memory is to always associate two things together. Sometimes when I when I go to sleep but I know that for instance I don't maybe I don't I need to wake up early the next day and, I'm, and I've gone to bed a bit too late uh, then because I know that sleep cycles tend to be around one and a half hours uh, so I tend to set my alarm clock in multiples of one and a half hours. When it comes to brain hacks there are a few things that I like to do to uh, stop myself from worrying about things uh, so I like to deal with something as soon as possible and that doesn't mean I have to finish whatever I've started right away it might just mean that I write down a time to schedule the task that I'm kind of putting off forever so that I know eventually it will get done. When I'm having conversations and I want to uh, kind of meta-analyze like why we're having the conversation or why it's interesting that I'm having a conversation about this topic with a particular person. Um, I used to feel really awkward about that and be worried and anxious that I'm just socially incompetent and that's why I'm branching off into this meta-analysis. But now I'm realizing that actually like this kind of contextual analysis, I mean it has a lot to do with what I'm researching as a neuroscientist and understanding how context affects the brain and so now I really kind of get into it and once I tell people that like oh I'm a neuroscientist and this is why I'm kind of interested in this the you know people I'm in conversation with sometimes also get into it as well which is super nice. I try to take advantage of some of the things I've learned as a neuroscientist so rewarding periods of, of long successive um, concentration minimizing possible distractions which can give you small dopamine kicks which make them addictive um, so yeah try and put these techniques to get better at concentrating. I think it makes me second guess myself a little bit more than I otherwise would I think it makes me think okay why did I do that um, I think it's also made me a bit more forgiving of myself um, things like I'm aware that there's only so much you can remember and also things like having a good night's sleep between learning things is actually really important. So I think that's the thing I would never, I'd just push and push and push if I wasn't actually aware that there are actual limits that we can't push that much. I start to think of a brain as a kind of lump of tissue, which takes inputs from the outside world, sensory information like light and sound and smell, and makes decisions based on the inputs that it's getting. And you can start to think of the brain as doing this from you know, the word go, from the word you're born. So you're, an, you're basically a kind of combination of your genetics and your environment. And so I see it, uh, any human being, I don't think of it, a person as having a soul, but I think of them as having this experience. And so you then start to realize that you kind of accept everyone for what they are a lot more easily because you start to understand that they're just the product of those things. They don't really have very much choice in who they are. And so, it makes me genuinely just really interested in why they became what they are.